Well. Last week you all found the entrance to the Bleeding Citadel and uh, were transported into another one of Lulu's memories. You found yourselves in a place called Idle Glen, which is currently under attack by demons. You fought through waves of demonic creatures and uh, the last thing you all heard was a voice in your heads saying uh, you have about an hour before the really bad stuff happens so take a rest um, before that vo voice appeared in your minds one of your previous traveling companions Dolos appeared with a gift for some of you uh, he brought you each your some fragment of yourselves uh, a piece of your souls that was missing uh, as well as uh, um, your sister's soul Sylvie uh The return of these pieces of yourselves has broken all outstanding contracts you have with any devils in Avernus. And the one thing that um, Dolos did mention to you all before he dissipated into the uh, ash and fl fire of, uh, of Idleglen here is that... This gift that he gave you all will anger uh, a devil you're all familiar with, Bell. Idle Glen still burns, uh, and off in the haze at the edges of town, every now and again you can still hear the sounds of battle and screams, uh, uh, but as far as it seems for the time being the assault upon Idle Glen has paused and you have an hour uh, or so the voice has said before it begins once again. Uh, I think Sylvie, as soon as Dolos dissipates, she immediately changes her clothes again, her glamour weave, to match her wings. Uh, you, you transform uh, your clothing to sort of match these you know multicolored sort of monarch butterfly wings that your um, leathery bat wings have turned into uh, you can feel the um, peacefulness of your sister's soul that now you carry inside of you um, sort of resonating through your body a, a, a calm uh that you likely haven't experienced since you were a little girl. There's a, a lightness of all these long years of hunting and, uh, and uh, this single-minded focus that you, you've had for so long has is, is finally all come to an end. Sylvie, you look gorgeous. <laughs> oh thank my god. You. I love the new wings. Thank you, thank you. Sylvie so just kind of like poses. <laughs> love applauds. Loves it. 
That reminds me. Clearly. Yes. Yes. Lep, Lep walks over to you. And he slaps you in the face. <laughs> that was for what you did to my dead body. And then he I, I you told you it was coming. <laughs> I told you it was coming, Crayley. Yes. Uh, okay, I need to get that out of my system. Do we... I just want to clarify one point. So we know... Did... How do I put this? Did Dolos verbally say that he gave Sylvie essentially his sister's assault? Yeah. Her? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously take the slap and then I just, I do want to go up and hug Sylvie and just say, I'm so, Sylvie, I'm so happy for you. I'm <clears throat> sorry, just getting a little choked up. <laughs> um, Neither of you guys are undead anymore, by the way. Nice to feel alive again. I'm glad of the consequences. Only until you get Someone critically striked. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kaylee, <clearly>, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you a hug, Sylvie, and I'm so happy... Sylvie, I'm so happy you got your, which you, uh, honestly, the main reason we came down here, you finally, through the help of Dolos, were able to protect your sister. I'm so happy for you, Sylvie. I'm sorry. What? I let us. down that path with Belle. It wasn't that your fault. Hmm. Uh, it kind of was. That's I how mean, I see it, at least. But, Sylvie, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> well, now that you have it, your sister's this... soul, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to bring it to a Vandor and release it there? Maybe. But first, I think I want to go to the Feywild. You want to come with? Can Honestly, I? Honestly, we could plan, we could plan like a whole trip. Oh my god. <gasps> There's this really cute little like hut with like chicken legs on it. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's my mother's, sister's, cousin's, daughter's. It is adorable. Oh my god. I will show you it, all about it. Okay. It sounds adorable. It is adorable. <laughs> uh, you guys can, um, you know, do a short rest if you need to. Use your hit dice. Um, Yay. Whatever you may gain back. Uh, um. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, quick question. When Lev was brought back, was he brought back with one HP or just full HP or half HP? I think just one HP. Cool. Would, um, would you allow him to cast a spell and still get his hit dice? If the spell cast takes it's, a minute to cast, it depends on yeah. If it takes a minute, sure. Okay, because yeah. he you only need um, uh yeah you can you can cast a spell that's fine. Okay, he just he just wants to cast um, Dream, and see if he can try and get in contact with Lulu. Uh huh. Um, um, let me put it. Through. So, is this big bad coming here? Do we think? Because if it is, I can kind of protect us potentially. I can make a glyph of warding. Ooh. But it's gonna take about an hour. I think anything's worth a shot at this point. 
think we roughly... Yeah, you guys could prepare for um, what may come next, any way you, you please. Uh, what type of message, what kind of message are you trying to convey? You're not necessarily in Lulu's dreams, per se, at the moment. So what kind of message yeah. are you trying to convey to, to well, Lulu? Well, the way it works is that if she is asleep, I would be in her dream. But given that we're in her memories, it's a little weird. But he's trying to get in contact with her to make sure if she's okay and just figure out what's going on. Um, I mean, that's, he's, he's just trying to make sure that she's all right, because she doesn't know what's going on. Make an insight check. Okay. Uh, not bad. Uh, you cast your spell, Lep, and... You know, I think normally when you would cast this, you would your surroundings would change, you know, you, you'd find yourselves transported into whoever's the target of your spells is, you know, dream state. Uh, you cast a spell and nothing happens. Uh, do you have any levels of exhaustion currently? Uh, no, he does not. You know that you're inside of Lulu's memories. Um, so you can only imagine that she must be at least alive. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I think Lep just does that. Where do we want to put this glyph? How big is it? Uh, it can cover 10 feet in diameter. So it's not a huge amount of space. Do we want to brace for an attack, or do we want to brace? For... Do we want to hide off to the side just to see what happens? If we hide off to the side, we're going to have all these people defenseless. I. I don't think I understand memories enough left. Um, the voice said we have an hour and there's going to be a bigger attack. So I would assume from these houses on the left and the right and this bridge walkway area is where we're going to get whatever demons or devils or creatures of the night are going to come and try and attack us. So, realistically, we should be okay. 
but we need to make sure that we stick together mm-hmm. and that we don't do anything. I can't believe I'm saying this. Don't do anything chaotic. <laughs> well, I have a pressing question as to why they're attacking this town. It doesn't appear to have any real value behind it. Not to say that demons tend to have a lot of logic behind them, but you'd think they'd save their strength for a more strategic operation. I mean, unless there's something here. I mean, it's Lulu's memories, and there's a statue of Zariel. Maybe this place is important to Zariel somehow. Mm. Mm. Yeah, she was an for her, The priestess that, uh, yeah, she, she steps out from behind the statue, actually, and she says, um, I, I may be able to help you there. She Please. Sa- she says, um, ages ago, Idleglen was threatened by Null tribes. And as the Nulls raided the town, a cleric of Lathander by the name of Sonder Brightstar led the people in prayer to his god for aid and Lathander was moved by the people's bravery and sent an angel her name was Zariel she defeated the gnolls and drove them off and the people of this town erected this statue and she sort of gestures to the big statue of Zariel to honor her um Generations later, the Nulls returned to Idle Glen. This time, there were demons in their ranks, and Yenago himself leading the warband. Zariel and her Hell Riders came to Idle Glen's aid once more, but not before the town was mostly destroyed. Think you know who's coming back again? <laughs> Wouldn't be too surprised. This is a memory after all. Well, that's just great. Who is that, by the way? There's all these big names, and I don't understand them. He's a okay. he's a demon lord. Like Asmodeus. No. 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 I think I'm gonna put the glyph right here and just have it expand out ten feet. I think I'm gonna do... Explosive runes for, uh, trying to think of the right way to put this. For, uh, whatever demon steps into it, it'll be triggered. Where do you want it? Uh, right here, and then have it expand out 10 feet. Like a 10 foot radius. Yeah. Load faster. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it would be a good idea to try and pray to a thunder? I mean, mm-hmm. if, if, if Zario came with the Hellriders once, and I haven't seen them since we've gotten here, maybe we can try and get them to come back? I mean, it's worth a shot. Well, okay. I'll try and... I don't know how to pray, Mavipo, you want to help me? 
Um, he'll, he'll look to the priestess and say, what year is it? She tells you a date that's like 50 years before uh, what would the current year be in Faerun. Okay. So that'd be... 1444 DR. So, if uh, his memory serves correctly, this is after Zariel fell from grace. So, there is no chance in the Nine Hells trying to summon her is going to work. She uh, she tells she, she tells you the date. I'll be more specific. She tells you the okay. date of the same day that the. Uh, uh, Zariel and her Hell Riders rode into Avernus for the first time. Okay, so that's true. Then she's probably not going to come to our aid. Oh. Can I just interject before you start praying there, Lep? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't think. I I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. We're in a memory. Yes. This is the past. Yes. Lulu's perception of the past. Perception of the past. Does anything we do... Matter? Yes. Is it going we, to... If, let me explain it like this, Crayley. If we die here, we're going to die in real life. Yes, it's, but... Do our decisions here have any it, effect on reality? It, no. No. The way memories work is they're not going to affect the timeline or the reality of the multiverse. That's more of time travel. And that's, I could tell you about it, but that's much more higher level than I am. Then, is it terrible to say we. Leave these people? Yes. But it won't change the outcome. No. But remember, Lulu is still here and he points to the sky. You did shoot an arrow. She is still with us somehow. So if we run, she will know. And we're probably going to end up back and behind that door, faced with all, all of the other demons. So... I would like to be in a place of sanctuary. And Can we shape her memory. What do you mean? actions here. If this is all a memory, we can't obviously affect the present from mm -hmm. this past. For the... I don't know. I, I apologize for the... For the initial gardener, almost, of the group. <laughs> I want to clarify. If we're just watching things play out. If we fight this. Doesn't that inherently change this memory that's playing out for her? Well. I don't know. Because I don't know if there was a group of heroes who who fought I I don't know how this memory actually went but I would like to stay in fight at least to stay in Lulu's good graces Bailey you shouldn't overthink it you're gonna hurt your that little brain of yours <laughs> I, we just got <laughs> We were in such a shitty position, Lep. We were. I died. Dolos. <laughs> yes. Dolos stepped in. By some good grace of his own. Based on what he said, putting himself in <clears throat> Bell's sights, I assume. 
I'm trying to think. I don't want to say logically, but. <clears throat> Rationally? Rationally, self preservation after we've initially lost so much after some of the actions I took. I'm mm. trying to think what actions can we take to not go down a kind of dangerous path. That's why I I apologize, everyone. I just I'm trying to wrap my head around this idea of a memory. Lulu's memory what we can do in this situation mm. so we don't get immediately hurt again I that's just I guess what I'm getting at um I understand your dilemma and I've had some thoughts about it too and frankly it is puzzling mostly because there doesn't seem to actually be a reason truly for us to be here outside of maybe it being a measure of uh, our willpower of sorts to stand against what could very well be an impossible to win battle. Well, you know, we did go into the temple. Maybe this is a weird mixture of whatever divine thing was there and lose memories. Maybe this is like a trial we have to pass or something. You know, like in that one really good book written by that really good author. I mean, it would stand to reason that um, they wouldn't want anyone to enter the temple that wasn't worthy outside of not being good of heart. That means that you'd also need to withstand a trial that uh, measured your willingness to actually fight against impossible odds so then we fight unfortunately looks like that's the path we have to take uh, well you can be in the front lines it's okay you're strong i'll just be in the back <laughs> the priestess um She's kind of looking you guys over, and she steps over towards you, uh, Lep, and she says, um, Well, regardless of what happens next, you all have fought bravely so far. I can't believe um, how many times you were stabbed and you're still standing. And she says, um, I can... Yeah. Kind of crazy. I could, heal huh? you, I could heal you if you like. Oh, you could? Ooh, if you do that, I'll make you some tea. Oh, uh, can I do an insight check on her? Sure. Before she heals him? Okay. Epp <laughs> is like, pretty zombs out, ready to be healed. 13. Um, as far as you can tell, she seems to be a, be a, a part of the of the memory. She doesn't seem to have any ill intention. You know, she, she prayed to Lathander and uh, at the statue and Okay. She's doing her best to protect the uh, her flock as the demons were attacking the church. Uh, she lays her hands on Elep and um, heals you for 14 more. Aww. Oh, thank you. I'm back up to half. <laughs> she says, um, oh yeah, you really beat up, aren't you? And uh, yeah. she uses another one of her I got stabbed six times. For 21 more. Ooh. Ooh. It's okay, Lep. You did great. I did. I wasn't able to save the dog. It's okay. Oh, where is You the tried. Dog? I don't know. Oh, there <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, no. Has it been more than a minute? I think, I think so, right? I think yeah. it's at, at this been point, at yeah. least oh, a half no. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, well, it's okay. Oh, I completely forgot. What is your name again, miss? Uh, my name is 
Uh, Jessa. Jessa Brightstar. Jessa Brightstar. Do you want to help me pray to a goth that I don't know anything about? She says, um, I would, it would be my, um, it would be my pleasure. I um, guess I should pray. Do you want to teach me how to pray? She says, um, of course, it's quite simple, really. You simply kneel, close your eyes, and you speak from the heart. Left kneels, gun both knees, closes his eyes, and says, I really like tea. I really like cookies. I really don't want us to die. And my brother gave me a necklace by someone who I guess was really important. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I really hope that we all survive and we get out of here and that the blood wars can come to an end and we can save Zario and hopefully Philaxis can be brought back and we can go to the Feywild and have a vacation trip. <laughs> um, amen, Alexander, whatever endings <laughs> are. <laughs> she says, um, it was a noble first attempt. I hope that, um, the gods can hear you. I hope they're listening. I hope so too. Thander has blessed Idle Glen before. I hope that his patience, his guidance, his blessings are not. And uh, your pleas are not falling on deaf ears. I don't think so. I feel like there's always someone listening. She says, um, I must see if there are any other injured amongst my followers, but, um, I would just like to thank you all for being here. I fear that we all would have perished if you hadn't arrived when you did. And, uh, just know that if more trouble comes, I will aid you as best I can. Thank you, Janessa. <laughs> and she goes back towards the church. <laughs> After thought, did I do a good job? Uh, yeah, um, did great. <laughs> Yay! Okay. That was my first time ever praying. I was worried. Uh, is there any, uh, anything else anyone would like to do yes. during this, uh, hour of peace? Uh, Rayleigh will have a question for Sylvie and Mavathor. Mm -hmm. um, maybe my memory's failing me. There's been a lot going on. Um, I heard mention this is when <laughs> How do I word this? Are we going to run into Captain Lightheart in this memory? Or am I misremembering? 
No. Unlikely since this happened when around the time Zariel fell from grace, so he okay. might have come back from Avernus by this point, but it's it's highly unlikely he's just here in Idle Glen of all places. Okay. Yeah. That I misremembered. Thank you. <laughs> That's it for me. Captain Lightheart was a, a hell rider. Okay. I think I was mixing up some of the timeline, so I apologize. It gets a little messy. I moved it around <laughs> a little bit too because uh, you know we kind of changed up the start of the adventure a little bit. It's okay. <laughs> That's what the multiverse is for. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, as the end of the hour nears, the uh, sounds of battle screams and conflict at the coming from sort of the darkness that surrounds Idle Glen um begins to sort of pick up and, and grow louder once again as if it's all closer once more to town you can hear the familiar yipping of knolls echoing from all sides and at the uh, western edge of town where you guys all appeared uh, in the light of the fire still burning throughout the streets of Idle Glen you can see six demons appear uh, one hulking ape-like brute and five small dog-like creatures with rubbery gray bodies and big ears as they rush through the streets of town towards the statue of Zariel, why don't you guys all select your tokens and roll initiative? Hell yeah. Okay. We're not going to die this time. Sylvie and Curly did not do good with that initiative roll. <laughs> I'm drawing little hearts next to the the rune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Left us in the back just fiddling with the necklace that was gave him. The big ape-like creature rushes uh, forward through the streets, pounding his fists on the stone as he lumbers towards you all with a dash. And Mavathor, you're up. Yeah, I just need to do some... Uh... Okay. Um, yeah. Seeing how quickly they're approaching, um, I'll move over to here and cast a holy weapon on Kraley's bow. Um, and that's 
part of that spell casting, really can go ahead and make an attack against that uh, demon. Alright. We'll do that. And then we'll use Sharpshooter for that. Everything should still be activated. Twenty-five to hit. Mm, yeah, twenty-five hits. Okay. Twenty-nine total damage. Your arrow arcs across Idle Glen, sticking into the demon, rushing forward through the streets at you all. And he'll move there, and um, I shot as well. Disperse over like this. And uh, that'll be the end of his turn. Alrighty. Uh, Lep, go ahead. Okay. Lep is going to uh, just move a bit towards the front. Um, and then he is going to cast Plant Grow as an action. So 150 feet, so it should be able to be. Um, okay, so like right there, like where that little cursor is. Um, a um, all normal plants in a hundred foot radius and down the point become thick and overgrown. A creature moving through that area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot it moves. Is it a hundred? So, yeah, it says a hundred foot yeah. radius, so it yeah, something like that. Okay, so it's like imagine like all of these like colorful, like vines and flowers like shoot out of the ground does this affect us winged folk i mean it's on the ground so as long as you're flying you should be fine okay i figured but just wanted to make sure okay oh wait all normal plants in a hundred foot radius become thick and overgrown so I don't know if that I think that just means the sides then? I don't I don't actually know. Well, some of the trees um burning or not, they sort of burst with growth. They start to sort of expand crawling down across Idle Glen's floor and uh kind of covering that area with Grows of, of tree root uh, that kind of burst up from out of the ground and um, and uh, sort of cover that area in foliage. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then as a bonus action, left is going to do something new and activate his starry form. Yay! I know, new subclass. Yeah, um, he'll go with the Chalice constellation. So more or less, it's... Uh, I wouldn't call it a constellation, more as like... it. Uh, it's very, like... Colorful. Like, it... it uh, like... Mm, it's like a constellation, but it, it doesn't look like a, it. You can, flavor, it has like, you can flavor it any way you want. It doesn't have to be, you know. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's like, imagine like a constellation, but instead of it being like blue with stars, it's like a very like bright, like yellows and pinks and reds and orange. And there's just like bumps. Rainbow Constellation. Yeah, it's a Rainbow Constellation. Love it. There was a word I was thinking of somewhere. Okay. Oh, oh. Prismatic Constellation? 
Prismatic. That's what it was. Thank you. I could not remember it. <laughs> um. But yeah, so he just looks like that. And that's his turn. Ten minutes. That's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. These little bastards. Uh, just pathetically. They have to spend four feet of movement for... I don't know why they couldn't have rounded that spell. Like, why four, why four feet? Why not just make it five feet? I... Um, I... <laughs> we say that they... Uh, you can make it five feet. We'll just Yeah, we'll just call it difficult terrain. They trud- trudge through basically like one unit of movement. Um, as they try and climb through these roots and stuff that have busted up through the ground and uh, the little tendrils of the plants sort of grab at them and try to slow their movement as they try to make their way towards you all. Sylvie, go ahead. Oh, sorry, anything else left? Mm. Starry form, that's it? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Alright, um, so first of all, Sylvie's gonna be like, guys, just make sure you're not within 20 feet of that glyph because uh whenever one of them hits it it's gonna explode oh okay Uh, i'll back up uh and then uh she's gonna give a bardic inspiration to kraley it's a d8 now and also sylvie's got a new uh little feature here uh if you fail a roll while using it you get to keep it instead of it just like going away nice um and then i think i think we'll just we'll just stay here okay that'll be my turn crazy Selected here, okay. Really, we'll move up here and release three arrows at the difficulty men. Use that verdict inspiration on the first one. Uh, 17 hits. Okay. And my next two attacks. Ooh, 12 and, uh, 20. Uh, roll a d4. Ooh, okay. Uh, I forgot to add her to the turn order, but Jessa casts Bless on all of you. Oh. Oh, yay! Awesome! Thank you, Jessa. Thank you, Jessa. Uh, so that's a 14. The 14 will still miss, but um, the third attack will hit. So that's another 34 damage. Uh, your two, your three arrows go arcing out through Idle Glen, two of them striking the uh, demon, which falls into the uh, overgrowth now covering the street. Oops, did my mic cut out again? No. Okay, no. Cool. No. Mm-mm. You're good. Uh, good job, Kaylee. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia Malathor. All right. Uh, from the <laughs> south of you all, you guys can hear the yipping sounds of gnolls um, and sort of bursting through the shadows, uh, illuminated by the flames in the street. Uh, a, a grouping of gnolls appears. between these two uh, houses. Oh, yay. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna be fun. You Uh, have fun with that, Magathor. That guy's up. Dead. (laughs) So, one of these gnolls at the front. Five, ten. 
Uh, you probably don't. You probably still don't have uh, spirit guardians after that hour, right, Mavathor? No, I don't. Are you gonna cast it again soon, or? Um, probably not. Okay, I'll take. Um, let me take this. Holy weapon as yeah. concentration. Oh, okay, gotcha. Sounds good. All right. All right, from the corner. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. One of these guys will dash. Uh, Mavathor, you're up. All right. Probably about um, to be the worst mistake of the Snow's life. Probably. <laughs> well, since it's not concentration for whatever reason, he's gonna summon the spiritual weapon. Um, so let me just check the rule on that. All right. Um, he's going to use the third level spell slot. That does an additional D8. Oops. Done my thing. Select All right. Um. And as his action, he'll go ahead and swing the Nightmare Crook at the null. Uh, maybe with less? 11 to hit? Uh, you miss with the Nightmare Crook. Uh, the Null sort of holds up his um, war club in front of him. Your two weapons collide. and uh, But you can still roll with the spiritual, yeah, the spiritual weapon, right? Weapon. Yeah. 19 is good. Or... Oh, there should, there should be another T8 on that. I don't know why. Or 12 force damage. 12 force. Um, my shadows will converge. Fifteen is his AC. I think those uh, are all gonna yeah, be good. Yeah, all of them yeah, hit. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, uh, I forgot. Also, the uh, crook also adds plus five to the damage roll. So, uh, fourteen, nineteen. Um, Does it? Yeah, it, it says uh, attack and damage. Uh huh. I wasn't reading very well when I made that thing. Well, I did use it for most of the time. So. <laughs> no, yeah, it's I'm all just good. Taking advantage of what's the yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let me just calculate this out real quick. Uh, Fourteen, seventeen plus twelve. I think it's enough damage. Yeah, uh, <laughs> seventy-three points of necrotic damage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stay where you are, or do you want to move at all? Um, given the gnolls are coming this way, then yeah, he'll, he'll stay where he is. Okay. Lep, you're up again. Lep looks towards that and says, yeah, go Mavador, kill that thing. And then he's gonna go around here and say, I'm gonna hide behind you two. Oh, okay. Um, and he's going to cast as his action Aura of Vitality. Ooh. And then, yes, and then as a bonus action, he is going to heal himself with 2d6. Um, but since he also is the chalice, he's supposed to get an additional 2d8 plus 5. So 2d6 plus 2d8 plus I think that that should be it. So 18 plus 5, whatever that math leads out to. 23. Nice. Okay, and that's his turn. Look, guys, I'm useful. <laughs> uh, let's see. These guys 
struggle in your direction still. And, uh, you guys are blessed from Jessa. I think she conserves her magic for now. And Sylvia, you're up. All right. Uh, let me just check real quick. Then I cast Shatter. I want to make sure I can reach these nulls first, though. Oh, yeah. I'll be able to make it, I think. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Alright, we're gonna go there, and we're gonna cast Shatter. Right here. Get all of these nulls right here. Yeah. What is it? Dex uh, save for it's... Shatter? Yeah. Uh, DC 17. Three of them pass, actually. Um... 22 total damage? Yeah, half to uh, 11 if they pass. Two of them screech as they shatter. And uh, the other three will take half that damage. As uh, two fall dead. Uh, and then. Oh, wait, there's six I'm of going... them. Hold on, let me make one more roll. <gasps> Uh, oh. Dex. What was the DC? 17? Okay, you kill three. Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Let's go, uh, Sylvie. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to give Mavithor a bardic inspiration. Nice. Uh, and that'll be my turn. All right, Kraley. Good. My plan slightly. Crayley's just gonna move 15 feet and just release an attack. Okay, here. On these two front individuals, I'm gonna make three attacks. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. These guys down here, the gnolls? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I guess I'll aim for the one on top, so to speak. Yeah. I, I think the only thing you need to do is not miss, and you should be able to get all three of them with your attacks. Because okay. you do well over 11 damage per shot, which is how much life each one of them has left. <laughs> I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep sharpshooter on. But I put it like that, so. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, you obliterate all three of them. Um, ah, teamwork. Go crazy. Go one, crazy. one after the other, your arrows um, pierce into their bodies, and they let out little yipping howls as each one of them dies, with a quick succession of arrow shots. Um, from above you guys there's a screech from the sky as a, a rock swoops down out of the shadows uh, oh, shit. swiping over your mm -hmm. head lep, um, as it Trying sort of uh, barrels down oh. towards, uh, towards you guys uh, oh no it's a big bird it will uh Swipe it, you uh, with the talons. Attend hit, which is not going to, and uh, pack at you with its beak as well for six piercing. 
Okay. All right. So happy I healed myself. Mavathor. Hey. Um, I'll send my spiritual weapon over. Attack. Twenty-seven to hit. Oh uh, yeah, that's good. I need to fix that, but, um... I don't think I've ever said no that misses to a 27 before, <laughs> which I'm looking forward to someday. <laughs> <laughs> the Blade Singer. <laughs> yeah, like a resting AC of, like, 28. Yeah, I played a Blade Singer, <laughs> and, and um, I think by level 5, I had 24 AC. 11, or, uh, 12 points of force damage. All right. Shadow is small. Roll up. Um, let's see. Five attacks. Oh, Ooh. two nat ones. Ouch. All right. Fifteen um, AC for the Brock as well. So I think that's only two hits. Crit in there too, though. Yeah, um, so 12 plus um, 19 plus 5. Uh, 36 points of necrotic damage. And its strength score is reduced by 3. Sorry, what? what was the damage shuttle? Uh, what was that? What was the damage shuttle? Is my mic cutting out again? Uh, it did for just like oh, a second. Sorry. What was the damage total? Uh, 36 necrotic. 36, okay, cool. And minus three strength, okay. All right. Uh, Lep, go ahead. Save me that marathon. <laughs> he runs behind Crayley. Crayley, do you need help? Can I help you? Yes. The okay. And he's going we'll just to make a, a reaction oh, real quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, which misses. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank God. The train. Um, <laughs> as his bonus action, Lep is going to heal Crayley. Oh. Because uh, he is in 30 feet of him. So that's 2d6. And then 2d8. And then 5. So 21. If, if that's the right math, I think. Um, out of character. <laughs> Grayley was going to say, um, hope with something, something else. Grayley's almost at full health, so thank you. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> Le thank Le you. Lep is a little, Lep is a little small branch. He, he, you gave him help and you helped you. Um, Crayley also has 1,285 HP. Oh, well. Thank you, Crayley. I'm just going to hide behind you from this big bird. Mm -hmm. I and, uh, <laughs> that's, that's his turn. <laughs> All right. These guys continue to struggle forward. <laughs> they all hit that rune eventually. Um, Sylvie, you're up. All right. Um, gonna aim a phantasmal killer at the rock. Uh. DC 17 for wisdom, and then if it fails, it takes 19 psychic damage and becomes frightened. All right, it takes 19 psychic damage. Okay, and then on the uh, it's a concentration spell, so at the end of every turn, it can re roll the wisdom Saving save. Throw. Okay, yeah, but for now, it's just frightened. All right. And, uh, 
Really? Uh, Crayley? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, Crayley is... Oh, you're, you're fine. Uh, Crayley is going to spend their action releasing an arrow and using... Click on it real quick. Seeking arrow. Aim. Ooh. Mm. Should have read this fully. Um, I initially, I initially was gonna say, use it towards Zariel, but I don't think I've seen her recently, so I am gonna throw it towards. Can I aim for I'm trying to read this? An inanimate object. It says creature. Yeah. Moving around corners if necessary and ignoring three quarters cover and half cover. The target is within the weapon's range and there is a path large enough for the arrow to travel to the target. The target must make a deck saving throw, otherwise the arrow. Okay. Um, I'll aim for Lulu again. Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Well, you haven't seen her. In the, you haven't seen her in the last minute either. You can just shoot another arrow oh, at the shit. sky. You can just shoot another arrow at the sky if you want. Um, I don't know. I <laughs> I'll own my mistake, <laughs> and I'll use that arcane shot uh, for Lulu and probably miss. Would be my guess. The target takes damage as if it were hit by the arrow, plus an extra one d six force damage, and you learn but the I target's current it's... location. I forgot it's been past a minute, but I will own that, so. Sorry. That's okay. You just fire another arrow at the sky? Yep. But you use Seeking Arrow? Yep, but... Uh, make a Wisdom saving throw. Is it gonna fall down and hit one of us? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> mm. Sylvie's already going like this. <laughs> Uh, your arrow shoots up and disappears into the darkness above you all, uh, there's some brief pain in your mind, clearly, as you take one level of exhaustion. Okay. My turn. How many do you have? Uh, I think this is my third, honestly, so... So I have disadvantage on ability checks, half my movement speed, and then I have to see what the third level does. Disadvantage on all attack rolls. Ooh, good to know. <laughs> or wait, is it? Hold on, I, it's been, exhaustion is such a niche condition. Yeah. Yeah, I had it, I had it pulled up, but I must have moved it. Yeah, attack rolls and saving throws. Okay. There we go. Learn from my mistakes, Bailey. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I gotta, I gotta stop whatever this is. Uh, be I could just fly up there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't fully read my ability for that, so. It's all good. Um. You guys hear uh, a wild hideous laugh piercing the air. It cuts through the sounds of, of battle and a giant knoll covered in matted bloodstained fur and swinging a three-headed flail charges out of the haze from the west. You see gore dripping from its red maw that is open in violent laughter. Hello, friend. Oh no, not friend. <laughs> <laughs> not friend. <laughs> uh, the rock provokes opportunity attacks from all of the shadows, I guess, as it flies away in fear, right? Yes. <laughs> if 
15. Um, 15 is CC? Yep. Okay. Uh, so hit, miss. Hit, hit, miss. Um. Or 44 necrotic damage, mm. and if it matters, its strength score is reduced by 6. No, as the rock turns to flee, the shadows rip it apart. Um. Aha! Ooh. Huzzah! And Mavathor, you're up. Alright, well... He doesn't like the giant um, demon coming towards them, so I guess yeah, I'll we'll, we'll just uh, get ready for it. I'm not sure what he can do to really prepare, but yeah. Um, I guess for now I'll just reposition. Uh, Lep, you're up. Um, Lep is gonna look towards Kraley. Kraley, when you first shot at Lulu, how far up was she? Mm, I think it went the full range and then it disappeared into the clouds. Uh, let me double check. Seeking arrow goes. I have an idea, but I want to make sure you're gonna be okay. Uh, my full weapons distance, which is... Oh my goodness. Do a math um, in my head. If it's a longbow, max range is uh, 600. Yep. Woo! Yep. So 600 feet into the clouds. Oh. That's how I remember it. Okay. I'm not going to fly 600 feet into the clouds. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, hey. hey. Well, instead, Lep is going to look towards Sylvie and say, Here you go, Sylvie, and he's going to kill you. Oh, thank attack. you. So, 56, 58, um, 18 plus 5. Yay, thank you. And then Lep is going to run behind Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck! And that's his turn. Okay. I mean, I guess in theory, I don't know how high up the clouds are, so maybe it just went past the clouds. I remember it being 120 feet, but I, I don't really, yeah, I didn't know for sure. Are you talking about your arrow? When yeah, the like, first one that he shot to hit uh, Lulu last night? Because I, I know it went past the clouds, but the seeking arrow goes up to 600 feet, but I guess the idea is I don't see it going past the clouds. Yeah, you find that it disappears into the uh, haze. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. I'll fly another time. The creature basically comes to, like, the edge of where the overgrowth is, and um, it's, like, sniffs at the air and smacks its flail down on the ground, and with, like, a great amount of speed, you see it turn towards one of the burning houses and he clamber, clam, clambers up the side just ripping into the building as he pulls himself up to the rooftop and uh, he then leaps with a large bound from one house rooftop to the next. You can hear the crushing of uh, the rooftops like shingles as they his heavy footfalls are crashing over the um, burning buildings and he sort of disappears from your guys' sight. You can hear him yipping uh, and and growling violently as as his uh, vicious 
demonic sounds uh, grow closer to you in the shadows of the rooftops. Oh, lovely. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sylvie, you're up. Oh, boy, Sylvie don't know what to do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, Sylvie is gonna give a bardic inspiration to Lep. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and then... I guess she's just gonna move over here. Kind of wait for the others to get closer. And that'll be her turn. Alrighty. Uh, Crayley? Uh, Crayley will hold an attack. Okay. Um, for that individual that was leaping and bounding. <laughs> Sounds good. That we lost sight of. All right. So. Mavathor? Um, we'll move here. And, um, are there any kind of, like, shadowy areas around here? Uh, the main thoroughfare of the street and the courtyard are fairly well illuminated by flame. There's a small area behind the statue of Zariel that's sh a pool of shadow. Mm. Um, but there's so much fire uh, around the courtyard from the trees and the buildings that it's all fairly well illuminated. Okay. Um, would the area like in the um, plant growth be considered dimly lit? Uh, that's a good question. I would say that in beneath the plant because the shadows only need a space small enough to you know squeeze into or whatever right yeah they they only need yeah the um, cover of the i would say the shirt of the cover of the um beneath the little canopy of overgrowth that is now covering most of the west end of town under the overgrowth there are pockets of shadow that they can find gotcha okay um, yeah, we will go ahead and squeeze down into a really compressed, uh, shadowy plot and hide in the, in the growth of the plants. All right. Yeah. Uh, nice. Lep. Lep oh, sorry, anything, el anything else, Ma anything else, Mavathor? Sorry. Uh, no, that'll be it. Okay. I'll, I guess I'll move my spiritual weapon, but. Sounds good. Lep looks towards Mavathor, thinks about asking if he wants help, looks at him, decides not to. <laughs> and then is going to just run over to the base of the statue of Zariel, and he's going to try and pray and see if that does anything. He's going to go on his knees, close his eyes, and pray to Lathander. Le All right. Do you want me to pray? Because I will. I will make an up another one. <laughs> no, you can. Uh, you can be praying. Um. um oh, the thunder, God of <laughs> Light. I don't know you very well, but the man who used to own this necklace did, and he was really strong and important as i was told and this town is besieged by really ugly looking dogs and demons and flying birds and i do not wish to die i do not wish for the people i travel with to die uh -huh. i do not wish for janessa to die i don't know if you want to hear me but if you do i would ask that you help us maybe send us reinforcements like Zariel and her Hellriders or 
just power or light or maybe some tea. That would also be nice. <laughs> Thank you. Let the answer. Uh, your, um, prayer cures Kray- your prayer cures Kraley of one level of exhaustion. Oh, oh cool. Um, and that's his turn. You guys hear oh. um, this uh, wild, hideous, piercing laughter grow ever closer. You can hear the bounding of large footfalls across the rooftops just bending um you know the formation beams of these houses in idle glen as it, as this creature bounds across the rooftops ever closer to you uh sylvie uh okay yeah. um i think i'm gonna go ahead and start shooting at these little weird dogs um, so I'll shoot at this one right here, the one that's like right in front of me, with Shadow Strike. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> or not. <laughs> the, uh, the frightening sounds of, uh, of this massive, um, beast are, uh, shuddering down through your spine as they get closer and closer and uh, your attack just goes way off and uh, disappears in the haze. Okay. Um, I guess I'll, I'll just stay here then and be like, oh god. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. Crayley, you still holding your attack? Um, yeah. If I can. Sure. That's what I'll do. Navathor? Um, he is going to hold a guiding bolt for if slash when the demon comes popping out of these buildings. Sounds good. Uh, Lep? Um, would Lep have noticed that Kraley's, one of Kraley's exhaustion levels had gone down? I don't necessarily know how that's something you could, would notice, but... Cool. He's going to continue to pray. Okay. <laughs> He's going to be like, the Thander, Lord of Light and Change, I guess? I don't know. Light is like a fire that burns within our hearts and keeps us warm like a nice hug and family and makes us feel good. Jessa and... from the mouth of the church, she says, you're getting better! Thank you! <laughs> um, it's like the tea that we drink. The flavors fill our stomachs and make us feel happy. They make us have moments of joy and visions of happiness. Um, but Thander, I hope that you hear me and help us in this time. Because there's a really big creature and I don't want to die again. I've already died like five times. Since I've gone here. <laughs> uh, your 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 con- your, com- your continued prayers uh, give everyone a DM inspiration if they don't have one. <laughs> There's a brief pause of the of these heavy footfalls bounding across the rooftops as they leap across another from one house to another and. <laughs> Uh, the laughter uh, sort of echoes out over the um, courtyard here. Uh, You can't see where it's coming from and then suddenly uh, right in the center of you all um, from Mm. invisibility uh, this creature pops out and makes some attacks against you, Mavathor. Okay. Um, the first one will be uh, with advantage. Uh, 24 to hit. That one will hit, yeah. All right. You take... Or... You take 10 bludgeoning damage. I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Okay, you're fine. Um, 
two more attacks with the flail. I would hope so with a plus 14 con. <laughs> 20, 23 misses you though, huh? Yeah. And the third attack oh. is a 30 to hit for 12 bludgeoning damage. Yeah. And uh, your held actions can go, so um, the guiding bolts. Yeah, that's probably a mess. At the shock of uh, this giant beast appearing, uh, yeah, the guiding bolt goes flying past. Uh, and Crayley, your held action as well. I'm going to do an attack and see if it hits. I'm going to keep Sharpshooter on for this attack. Just making sure everything's good there. Cool. Does that hit? Uh, 20 is the total? Yes. 20 does hit, yes. Okay. Um, I would like to use my last arcane shot. to attempt to banish so it would be a charisma save of thought I would, yeah dc 16 charisma save uh the creature fails and uses a legendary resistance and chooses to succeed oh. instead Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Um, as the creature lands here in the center of all of you and uh, reappears from invisibility, uh, he lashes out a few times with his flail. Um, what's actually this? I don't know. This could be a longer fight, or it could be over pretty quickly. So let's do a mid-session break right here before we like really get into the beast. 